Welcome to Drunk on Social, the symposium, where we help you stay ahead of social media trends, share the latest news, and highlight the strategies that are working to help you grow your business. Now let's join our hosts, Tristan and Jeff, in three, two, one. Ooh, Drunk on good. Social, the symposium. We are back for episode number 22. And as we discussed pre-recording, it's been a relative quiet week in social media news, but that doesn't mean we don't have stuff to share. So Tristan, I think we should start with, in my opinion, the biggest news, which is the addition in real Instagram reels. Tell us about that. Dude, what else is Facebook copying. That's what I want. I think that should just be a session on its own. Like, like a segment every week. What has Facebook copied this week? <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Thanks. Thanks for launching that, Jeff. Here we go. <laughs> they decided to do 60 seconds for the reels length. And I thought, wow, why not sooner? I mean, but the bad thing is we tested it out and the preview of the minute long reel <laughs> the preview is broken, so we can only see 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, and I don't know if it's broken for everyone, but it was broken for me. So the minute I found out that we could do 60 seconds, I immediately went to go do a 60 second reel. And what ended up happening was uh, if you've ever done a reel before, you you know, you you either record it or you upload a video, then you go to where you can add text and gifts or whatever you want, then you preview it, or th- during that time you're previewing it. And it will only preview 30 seconds, even though it showed in the previous screen that was all 60 seconds. And so I thought, well, crap, this thing's broken. This is stupid. Instagram sucks. And um, I, I, I kept trying it over a course of a number of days. And then I eventually just said, screw it. I'm going to post it, see what happens. And it did post the full 60 seconds. So it's just the preview feature or function is broken, which is not shocking. All right. Well, yeah, not shocking for sure. But look, dude, the good news is, now we can more easily repurpose those TikTok videos that we use and throw them onto Instagram. So you don't have to do double the work, right? Because it was kind of challenging, Jeff, having to figure out what else to post on Reels when you weren't sure if it was going to take off or not. But dude, you, you just reminded me of something. I was talking to Facebook on the phone on Friday. I was, at, it was in Santa Barbara at a parking lot in front of a beach. And I had a call with them and we talked about this specifically. And they is this, said, is this your, your weekly call with Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> well, I did text him last week after you got upset. So he's like, dude, let me, uh, can we just get on the phone? And I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. Who's this again? And how'd you get my number? <laughs> that was, that's how it started, but then it ended up good. Okay. Uh, anyway, we were talking they said, dude, uh, it's still all about stories stories is where everyone gravitates to and i'm like that's that's just crazy so look if you're not using stories just jump on it there's still over a billion stories being made daily and that's that's a massive number man and i I think we missed that as we're by the way as we're talking and recording this great podcast episode london london lazarson's texting me and he says uh oh dude he goes i'm so sorry that I haven't kept up with the emails back and forth for the event, Social Genius. He goes, can we jump on a call on Wednesday so we can debrief, but I'm in, totally in. So you might have to take that call for me uh, just in case. Heads up. Twist my arm. I'll talk to Macaulay Culkin anytime. (laughs) Uh, That's cool. And so I think uh, the moral of the story is, first of all, new features, use them. I will say this though, Tristan, we learned one thing. Uh, when reels came out, there was like, just same with clubhouse, same with a lot of other platforms or features. I think we rushed to use them thinking, Oh, we got to hurry up. We got to hurry up. But the reality is I don't feel like reels really caught on for about a good six to eight, maybe 10 months. Like reels is caught on now, but it, it was introduced like this time last year, it was August or September. Remember they rushed it out because they thought TikTok was going to get shut down and everybody was like, you got to be creating reels. And you know, I think there is, uh, uh, let me just say this to the most of the audience. There is a little bit of lag time that you have. It's not a lot. You don't have years, no. but you've got a little bit of time. The same can be, could have been said for TikTok back when, back when. Um, and so 
Tristan's right. Stories really is like the meat and potatoes of Instagram right now. And reels is still massively important. So, uh, you know, get used to using it because it's going to, it's going to become that, uh, those stories probably in the next year or two. So it's important for you to have several hundred reels already created at that point, have a database of them and have a skill set that knows how to create creative stuff. Dude, you know, there was something that there was just told to me today. Uh, and it reminded me of you, by the way, which is good. Must All have right. been like a Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt reference. <laughs> it was Matthew McConaughey. All, all right, right, all right. right, all right. All right. All right. Say that, say that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh, I love that. Dude, right there. It's like Matthew McConaughey. There you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was interviewing Bethany Mota, which we talked about, 10 million YouTube subscribers. If you want to check her out, she's awesome. And she said something that reminded me of what you say, which was, she's like, I, I just... I just dove into TikTok recently. And she's like, the cool thing about TikTok is that you could just jump in from your phone and it's a lot more authentic. You create everything there on the go. And she goes, I don't have to. She goes, I don't have to be prepared like a whole YouTube, right? She goes, I feel with YouTube, you have to have everything all set up nice and edit. And then people that go on there, they're, they, they're investing their time on watching your longer YouTube video, which is cool. She goes, but here, more authentic on the fly for TikTok. And I thought, dude, that's exactly what you do. You, and you do that so well. Yeah. And, and it just reminded me of you because we need to really get that point across to everyone listening in. That's that, it really is that simple. You just need to let go. Yeah, I agree. And, and there's no one right or wrong way to do things. Uh, Like you say, for me, it works. I do things on the fly because I'm like, ooh, this would be good content. I'm going to turn my camera on and that's it. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't and I delete it. Uh, But I'm always on the ready. And because I'm always on the ready, I end up creating more as would be perceived creative content, but it's not really. I'm just living life and recording it. That's it. Yeah. And and you do good, dude. The consistency is the key, man. And, And you're right about reels. I think Whatever you do, make a plan so that you stay consistent. Because once you start, this is a long game here. Mm-hmm. Right on, dude. Right on. Well, look, while everybody's jumping in on Instagram, and last time we talked, Snapchat, everybody was jumping in on Snapchat, apparently, too. And Twitter. Twitter's growing, right? TikTok, for sure, they're growing. But Pinterest, Pinterest lost a whole mess load of users. What was that about? What do you think? <sighs> You know, I don't because I'm not a Pinterest user, although I'm a believer in the app and I know that it's going to have probably more relevance over, over time. We have yet to figure it out yet. Um, but, but it's interesting. The loss is due to the world reopening. So I think a lot of, you know, it's, it's like a COVID thing. It's like everybody migrated to social media and TikTok when COVID started because we had more time. Now things are opening. People want to get out they're less reliant on a Pinterest now. So it makes sense. I don't know how they lose those users though. Why did they just leave? It's not like if I stop going to Facebook, they lose me. I just don't visit it as often. So I don't know how that really, you know, how, how does that mean they just can't, they just deleted the app? I mean, what does that mean? No, I think, I think it's just users in general because you, you saw that new report that came out that I sent you from Hootsuite, right? And it started showing where the top, the top websites are. And for three of those companies that were reporting those numbers, Google and YouTube are still number one and two. And Facebook was number three on two of those. But then you started seeing Twitter slide down, which at the beginning of the year, Twitter was number four, most visited, right? And Pinterest did slow down on that chart and TikTok picked up. So I think it's important for us to pay attention to these because that really should dictate where you're gravitating to and where you should be creating that niche so more people can find you, right? Yeah, totally agree. I totally agree. I do. And I still think Pinterest is going to have some relevance. It's another place to, it's like, it's like Clubhouse. I just think it's going to be very niche And so if you think, if you like the niche, don't let everyone tell you that it sucks or that it doesn't belong because it might work for you. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, I think that's the biggest message that we have for everyone is uh, Ed Stulock might be right. 
uh, in general for the masses. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I guarantee if we searched hard enough, we're going to find plenty of people that have had great success with the clubhouse. And, and I think we're going to say the same thing about Pinterest at some point. That's interesting, dude. That's interesting because uh, you just came up with a really good shirt idea. Oh, what is it? Find your niche. Oh, there you go. I like that shirt idea. Drunk right? on social. There you go. And write, write that one down. Add it to the list. Add it to the uh, list. Right. Stop the scroll might be my favorite. That's but. Oh, that's one of the best. I like all of them, but um, and, and that's a good, you know what? That's a good segue into another topic, which is, first of all, we are going to be doing some swag here at some point. We're working on that, but of course, COVID has everything delayed, so it's probably going to be delayed. We're going to have some hats and we're going to have some cool shirts and they are going to be uh, for sale that you will be able to buy. You know, you just have to check all that stuff out on Drunk on Social. So make sure you're a member on the Drunk on Social group, Facebook group. Uh, but also we had some exciting news this past couple of weeks is we've added some some uh, formal sponsors to Drunk on Social, which is exciting. You know, as you guys know, we have 9000 members and now we're on multiple social channels. And so that creates opportunity for others. And yep. um, we have been fortunate enough to be partnered with and work alongside a couple of other uh, companies and people who are doing some awesome things and are, are amazing contributors and sharers. And they have some amazing businesses that we both believe in. Uh, number one being uh, Michelle Berman with the Instagram power method. If you're yep. familiar with drunk on social, you've seen Michelle. She is number one, hands down our number one sharer in that group. Uh, and she comes from so much contribution. She's so great at sharing awesome nuggets and her coaching platform uh, for Instagram specifically Gosh, I, I can, I have, I know many people that have joined it and it's been life-changing for them. The way she teaches you how to connect with people and gain clients and gain business from Instagram. It's so powerful. Uh, check her out. And then uh, the second one's new. Uh, this is Tanya Everhart and her platform called Brandface. And I know these guys better than you do, Tristan. Uh, we've had them on the Lab Coat podcast multiple times. I've been on their podcast. And I'll tell you, this came about because she challenged me one day and said, you know, can you define your brand? And I'm like, well, yeah, duh. I mean, come on, I'm everywhere. I can, I, I know this crap really easily. And so I, I went to their, they have a, a website where you can actually do like a test and I don't have the link right now, but you could go find it, their website. You can go find them brandface, uh, real estate.com. Uh, go look them up or just Google brand face real estate. And they have this, this, um, this platform or this system that helps you define your brand. And I, you know, again, I filled this out and they came back and totally gave me some amazing suggestions that I'd never thought about. And so they have this platform that helps, uh, helps salespeople define and grow and build a brand. And a lot of people forget about that. They just, you, you just jump, you know, you go, you dive in to social media without actually defining who you are and what your brand is. And so check them out. They're awesome. They're both, uh, they both were sponsors on the social genius, which has already occurred. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of them um, on, in the Facebook group as well. So um, make sure you show them some love, just check them out, watch them, pay attention to them. They're doing some amazing things. Dude, that's, I love the plug, man. And, and obviously they're sponsoring our new event. So social <laughs> genius correct social genius which by the time this episode comes out will have already happened um and so you guys are going to have you're, you're already going to be just spewing with new knowledge by now because uh, it's going to be exciting in fact by the time this one comes out tristan we're probably going to be working on social genius too dude uh, which i'm just going to call it a success already okay Fair. What a great event, man. That was awesome. Great event, Jeff. Great event. Isn't that interesting how this has to happen? <laughs> we have to do these things and we're actually. We need, we need to produce these faster, damn it. Yeah, well, you know what? That's hard to keep up with. You always have to stay a few episodes ahead. So let's, uh, uh, let's move forward. We've got uh, two more, two more topics. One of All them. All right, what you got? What you got? A, uh, it's, it's a new infographic that just came out uh, for Instagram on tips for growing your Instagram. So I don't know if you have, the, you have this pulled up, but check it oh. out. Uh, I will, I will post this in the group, uh, which, so that means it'll, it will have been posted weeks ago, okay. um, but, but check it out. It's interesting because again, you know, Instagram, as we've said a million times, as bad as they suck technologically, um, or with, you know, with, with features and whatnot, it's the place to be and grow and connect. It's the future of social media because it's owned by Facebook and Facebook's too big to fail. Uh, that's just the reality. Even though Facebook is, is, is slowly becoming MySpace, 
and a lot of our <laughs> eyes, they're too big to fail. They're so much bigger than MySpace ever was. And they own Instagram. Therefore, Instagram will not fail. And Instagram will always remain relevant, even though TikTok kicks their ass. So yeah, what you need to do is, is pay attention to this kind of stuff to understand how to grow your Instagram. And I think, uh, you know, we could just go down the list, but, you know, Let's first things first, it starts with your bio. It starts with having a really strong bio that defines, <laughs> I just talked about your brand, but in, in you, you have minimal characters and you have to let your audience know, because here's what happens, folks. When people are scrolling Instagram, if they see a post they like, what do they do? The answer is they click on your bio, they click on your little, little circle and they go stalk you. And if they like what they see, guess what they do? They follow you. And that's what you want to happen. And if your bio sucks, no one's going to follow you. Uh, so make sure you have a good bio. Tristan, what, what kind of advice do you have for people on creating a sexy bio? I think be unique, man. Don't fall into the same thing that everybody does. Like if you're a real estate agent, because a lot of our followers are, don't just put real estate, right? And be a little bit more unique, maybe include a hobby, add a little bit of more fun with emojis, like a soccer ball. If you're into soccer, swimming, like Jeff loves the lake, right? So I would totally have Jeff add like lake connoisseur, like owner of the Lake of the Ozarks, right? TikTok connoisseur for Lake of the Ozarks, something like that. Just make it fun so that people can connect with you based on the stuff that you love. Agreed. I think that, that's what we miss. That's what we miss the boat a lot, man. Yeah, I agree. And, and go, go stock some bios, go look at, uh, go look at big Instagram accounts who are successful on Instagram and get ideas from them. That's, that's what you need to do, which also leads into the next uh, tip, which is sticking to a theme. And, you know, we talk, I think we talk about this as pillars of content, you know, define your pillars, figure out what they are. You should have four to five of them and, and, and stay consistent. You know, I will tell this audience right now, I am not the perfect person to follow there because partially because of what I do uh, with us in social coach and drunk on social and what we teach, I'm always testing. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like a social media account on ADD. I'm all over the place. And that's not necessarily the right way to do it, but there's a method to my madness and there's a reason why I'm doing it. And so for most of you though, that are using social strictly for your business, Stick to certain themes and, and keep it consistent. That's what the best of the best do. That's it, man. That's, that's really the key. You know what I was looking at uh, when, we're, when we're looking to create content, uh, there was a new, and, and in, if you want to place this link, I'm going to drop it into the chat here for everyone to be able to see with this podcast. But there's this new graphic, Jeff, I want to share with you, and we're just going to read it through so that those people that are tuning in can also uh, hear it. But it's by Hootsuite. And you can see here, types of online video content watched each week. And I, the reason I bring this up when we're talking about profile is because sometimes you've got to gravitate to what people are already looking at so that at least you can bring them into your audience. And the same thing goes with with everything that you're doing, know your audience so that you can talk to them more. Dude, look at look at this. Music video, comedy, meme or viral, tutorial, video live streaming, educational, right? Th this gives you a clear indication as to where people are gravitating to. Look at look at music video. That that just tells you why TikTok is massive. It's yeah. 52%. Yeah. It's it, well, yeah, I actually what I find most fascinating about this graphic is and, and definitely post this to drunk on social yep. is that first stat like that's like off the chart. Any kind of video. Say that again. Any kind of video, folks, if you're not using video, you are absolutely going to get left behind. Yeah. Any kind of video. Ninety three percent. That's the crazy. Number. That's crazy. And, and then it drops off to 52%, which is still really high music video, which means if you can figure out how to do educate or edutainment using music, you will give yourself a leg up or just even like when I do TikTok sometimes, and it's a talking head video, I put music in the background. I bet just that helps videos perform better Very but true. because TikTok has version. the ability to do that. Yeah. Unbelievable that it took. This so is long. a cool, this is a cool graphic. You should go check this out. Go find this one on the Drunk On Social page. Tristan will be posting it, so it'll already be there. And then I will be posting the other uh, infographic, which has 
several other pieces to it. You know, it was bio, it was sticking to a theme, post stories. We already talked about this. That's number three. And, and, and that's interesting. It's most important. Be consistent. Duh. We say this all the time, but that's so true. Use reels, uh, engage, use proper hashtagging. Michelle Berman talks a lot about this. And uh, one thing that I don't think a lot of people do is engage with creators. That's, that's oh. interesting. And, and you know, Tristan, somebody mentioned something today. I was on, gosh, who was I talking to? I even asked, oh, uh, Brian Stevens, National Real Estate Post mentioned that less than 1% of social media users would be considered content creators. They're just sporadic, less than 1%. Because I asked him where that stat was. And he said, just, just go search it, Google it. You'll find it. Uh, which, you know what that screams? It screams opportunity. It screams become one of them. Like, I think you and I are considered content creators because yeah. we, we do it consistently. And I think there's, there's no, there's no secret to our success has come as a result of that. And so look at that folks, if that stat is true, and I'm sure there is some truth to it, that most social media users, 99 point something percent are just passersby. They're just viewers. Think about that. Like Tristan, you and I are just dominating that arena because yeah. there's less than 1% of anybody who's actually creating content consistently. And Dude, uh, it's awesome. Wait, wait until uh, the beginning of next year after a social coach catches on. You know, those who, uh, who buy into that will probably reap the reward, man. What a great segue. I think we should talk about that. I think I had that on my list uh, to talk about social coach. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, Tristan and I have partnered with social coach, which is an app that where we create Tristan and I done for you content. So you don't have to think about it. And it all goes through the app. You, you subscribe, sign up for the app, and then you'll get a prompt every single day with a post and you go into the app and you put, you can push it out from the app to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. It connects to all four of those platforms. And guess what? It's already captioned and it's already hashtagged. And within the app, you can even add your own logo so you can make it yours. And we have this rotating content. So it's not like if you and 500 other realtors in Los Angeles sign up, you're all going to be getting different stuff because we've got thousands of pieces of content and it's growing every single month. And, and by the way, guys, this is the content that he and I have worked with and tested and used and are still using today and over the last however many years, obviously it's, if it's, if it's time, if it's timely, it's gone. Uh, but you're going to have access to a library. So like every year that you're thinking to yourself, Oh, you know what? Labor day is coming up. I need to do a post for that. Guess what? We're going to give you some labor day ideas, Halloween, every freaking holiday that's coming up. We're going to have ideas for that. You're going to have access to this library. You're going to get prompts to post every single day and uh, you'll be able to track. You'll be able to track how you're doing uh, because the app has that functionality. It's really, it's really cool. Um, we're big believers in it. We wouldn't have partnered with them if it wasn't something that we couldn't, you know, put our stamp of approval on. Very and true. Um, I don't know, what's, what's, your, uh, what's your quick take on that? Well, we just had a whole team sign up this morning. So, I mean, there is that too. I think it's just a matter of people being exposed to it because it's something that that is so easy to use. And you're like, I, I didn't even know that you could simplify it for me. Thank you. So dude, as soon as people understand what it truly is, it'll pick up even more. So anyway, check out Social Coach. It's an actual app. Go take a look at it on the App Store. Yeah, if you want the uh, website, you can check it out on the website. It's, uh, it's let's see, Social Coach, as just how it sounds, dot I-O forward slash drunk on social. Social Coach, Social Coach dot I-O forward slash drunk on social. I didn't know there was a website. See? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go check it out. Your yeah. face, your face is right there front and center. Damn dude. Now, now I know. I love that. How about that? How about that? All right, buddy. Well, I think that does it for this episode. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget to go become a member of the drunk on social Facebook group. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and most importantly, well, no equally important. Go give us a review on your favorite podcast app. Those mean a lot to us. So if you like what you listen to, do us a favor. Cause I know there's like three of them on there. That means, and we've got more than three listeners. So uh, 
Uh, for those of you who actually heard this, <laughs> give, just take three minutes to say, you know what? I like these guys, whatever, whatever you want to say, say whatever it is. We appreciate it. It goes a long way and uh, we won't forget you uh, in our wills. That's so good. That's so good. I, I'm making my will right now as we speak. I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for those five-star reviews. All right. Good idea. Good idea. All right, buddy. Until next episode. Good Adios. Night. Thanks for listening to Drunk on Social, the symposium. We are here to help you take your business to new levels through social media. Make sure to subscribe to get updates on new episodes and come join us on our Drunk on Social Facebook page. And as always, make sure you leave us a great review on your favorite podcast app. Feedback and likes are very much appreciated.